Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to all of our panelists for being here today. The topic I would like to talk about is China's use of AI. They've become a global leader in artificial intelligence, and they've been developing for a long time now something called deep fake technology and has progressed along to the point where they've been able to use AI to distort public figures. Um, an example of how a public figure might be distorted is uh, when uh, Vladimir Zelensky was uh, portrayed as announcing a surrender last year. And the software can not only use, be used to distort real people, but could also create people out of whole cloth. Uh, I believe uh, the China State Aligned Influence Operation used a J AI generated fictitious news anchors to promote China's global role in spreading disinformation around the world. So we've got this deep fake video technology. You can create fictitious people. Um, they could be used to really cloud even further people's ability to discern what's real information and what's not real information. So I'd like, uh, actually, uh, both Ms. Brandt and General Stilwell, would you answer this question? How concerned are you about our adversaries' use of AI and the deepfake technologies for disinformation purposes, and, and what is the best way for the U.S. to respond? That recent advances in generative AI, both uh, in video but also text and, and audio, uh, could have enormous effects on the health and strength of our information environment. I think we could see it um, meaningfully changing the actors that are sort of using these techniques, the behaviors that they uh, adopt, and also the content itself, how persuasive it is, and uh, also how discoverable it is. Uh, so I think it's something we ought to be paying attention to. Those are the first order consequences. There's a second order consequence, uh, and that is, you know, once we live in a world where we can no longer or trust, uh, you know, what we see with our own eyes. Uh, it's, um, we call it the liar's dividend, right? Those who are willing to say that actually truthful video of me isn't, it, it is not me, uh, right? We live in, a, we begin to live in a world where we can no longer uh, trust what's before us. And I think that erodes the very um, basis of the information environment that, as I've described, is essential for democracies to thrive. Senator, uh, the first one you'll agree with, the second one you'll tilt your head, but needs to be said. Uh, the first one is t uh, access to information. Information is the new oil, they say. We worked very hard to deny the PRC access to submarine cables. Uh, Huawei is, is big on this, and it's subsidized by the Chinese government, so you'd be stupid to build uh, one with an American or a you know, French company when the Chinese is offering it to you at half price. Well, it's not free, uh, and it's not cheap. It, you're going to pay for that in other ways. So I think the, f the first part in the first answer would be to deny, continue to deny them access to information freely, because that's the thing that makes AI work. Um, I mean, the second part is just an observation that we were reading, you know, I kind of monitor what goes on in the PRC fairly closely, and when they first brought in ChatGPT, uh, they were just like, hey, this is going to, decision making in the PRC is difficult. Um, and so this was going to make their decisions for them and, and, and algorithmize that and speed it up. And then all of a sudden, like next two days, you hear all of a sudden they shut it down. And you can imagine they asked, what's the solution to Taiwan? And the chat GPT comes back with, well, you should democratize. I go, okay, all right, all right, enough of that. Let's, <laughs> seriously. So what they're doing right now is they're taking AI, chat GPT, and they're, they're desensitizing it so it doesn't give answers it doesn't want. In some cases, we can just sit back and watch because uh, they will not be able, because they can't allow free information, they, they're going to take this very good capability and, and you know, reduce its capability. So the second one, though, that is not re relevant to this group, but we should all think about, is we need to arm our kids to deal with the social media space. A health, and, and it comes in the form of uh, critical thinking, media literacy, and a bunch of other things. And we're working with that at the Air Force Academy right now. Uh, is to seriously, I mean, just take critical thinking seriously because we can't filter that. We've tried filtering that. I'm still banned from Twitter for suggesting that the uh, virus, the pandemic, began in the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Right? Two years ago, that was a uh, conspiracy theory, and today we all see it's the most obvious answer. The government can't sift that information. We have to arm every individual to, when you get into this information space, to apply simple uh, critical thinking uh, concepts uh, so you don't become a, a, a dupe uh, uh, and a victim of disinformation. Uh, thank you for that, General. I, I appreciate that. In fact, I would say that applies to everything today you read in the media. I can't tell you how many times I've read it, having been a former governor and knowing that stories get printed that are just not accurate, and then I read a story and I believe it right away, and I say, why am I doing that? You know, I, I should know that reporters, for a variety of reasons, don't always get it right, even in our most trusted sources, 
And now we're just going to have to take that to a whole new level when we got AI that's going to be creating these fake stories. So thank you very much. Appreciate it.